It's week 13 and we'll talk about creating illustrations of bus profiles. So I've started creating some illustrations for the book. Um, what they will be are the profiles of buses. So if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, a profile of a vehicle, here's a illustration I've already kind of done years ago, but this is the profile of an old look GNC bus operated by Kent State. So it's basically, it's a layout, the perfect side shot. And the purpose of this is to kind of capture and uh, help share with the reader uh, the different colorings and in this case lettering and, and logos and all that stuff that are used. Um, so I'm starting the process of making that for a new look GMC. So I'll kind of show you here in a second what that is. Um, but there's some steps along the way. So I've kind of started with that. This isn't my first um, go at this. I had made uh, illustrations for my first book about the history of the Kent State Airport. And the name of that book is A Century of Flight at Peyton Field. And in this book, I created uh, profiles of the different liveries used by the Kent State uh, flight program. And so it's not all of them, it's just a selection. It basically, it's those that I had access to on hand that I could go out and take photo reference of. Um, but it's a pretty good representation of what they have. And nothing else that's good for uh, history too, because these will change and go away and um, it'll be kind of nice to look back on these. So anyway, you can see the different models of airplanes here. It doesn't really matter, but there's some 152 Cessna 172s and a Cessna 172 RG Cutlass. And they each have different coloring and different lettering that I uh, reproduced for this book. So I want to do something similar for the campus bus service and it'll be the different liveries of the uh, buses that they used, uh, or most of the liveries of the that they used on their buses. So the first step of this process is to have reference material. So there's two ways in my experience of doing this. One of them is to find blueprints of the object or vehicle that you want to reproduce and uh, Google search. Uh, if it's a popular enough one, there may be reference material out there offhand, which is basically what I use for the airplanes. The uh, Basically everything that I had in there, with one exception, I was able to find blueprints as kind of a, a basic guide. Um, the second method is uh, photos, taking photos of the object. And honestly, even if you use blueprints, the photos are uh, almost needed uh, because there's a lot of details. I mean, a blueprint is just very general in what you can reproduce. It'll just be the outline, maybe some windows um, and wheels, but you know, it's not gonna capture lighting, uh, or lights, I'm sorry, um, rivets or you know, different panel lines and all that stuff. So you'll kind of want both, even if you have, the, um, have just the blueprints. So anyway, so photos is what I have here because uh, turns out buses aren't popular enough to have a library of blueprints online that you can pull, pull off and then use as a guide. So photos, so I'm thankful, thankful I guess that's a weird word to use, but I'm in a position where I have the buses that I'm going to capture and uh, use for this. So it's a matter of just basically walking outside and taking the pictures that I need and then using that. So the nice thing is if I forget something or I miss a, a shot of something, I can just go back out and redo it, which I'm sure I'm gonna to have to do a lot of. So the first step is, is just that, taking photos. So there's a couple things with that that I've learned um, which are kind of helpful. I haven't necessarily learned from my own mistakes, but I'll kind of share uh, what they are here. So the thing when using cameras is the use of uh, a zoom and, and basically the change of the focal length of the final image. So I'm not gonna go to the details of photography too much here, but basically the smaller the number, the wider the angle shot. So this is something that you would use for, um, you know, landscape, you're trying to capture a really wide shot. And so, um, you know, the wider the shot, the more stuff you can capture, but there's a lot of distortion in that photo. Um, which isn't apparent when you're shooting something that's miles away, but when you're close to it, the distortion becomes somewhat apparent uh, the closer you look at the image. So 
Um, this is a photo that I just took of a model bus, which is 16 millimeters, which is great because it captures the whole thing. But there's some distortion to this photo, which isn't apparent unless you've done this before or you know where to look. And basically the further the way from the middle you get, the d more distortion that there is. So the most distortion is going to fall on either end of the bus. So in this case, the nose and the tail. And um, what that means is you're not going to capture an accurate side shot of that. So ideally what you want to do is get as far away from the object and take it with basically a telephoto lens because those distortions are minimized uh, greatly. A, one, because you're further away, um, and two, because you're using a longer focal length, there's less distortion. So here's a photo that I took with 285 millimeters, so significantly further away, actually as far as away I can get inside of my little office here. I could have gone out a little bit further, but I ran into a wall. So this is the best I can do. And what you'll notice here is the nose of the bus. You can actually see some of the windows, you know, the profile of the lights, and even a better view of the um, bumper along the way. And again, to kind of look back at the other one, all of that is gone. Um, it's just missing. <laughs> so uh, this was something that I hadn't accounted for in my first go at this when I created the illustration of the um, old look bus, I dug through a bus manual that I have, or maintenance manual, and wow, there is a profile view in there, and I thought, well, I'll just copy that. So this is a maintenance manual for GMC model. This covers 37-14s, 45-12s, 45-15s. My bus is a 4512. And in this manual, there is this profile view, which I thought was exactly what I needed. Um, and, you know, obviously it's made by GMC. Well, I can tell you from experience that this suffers from the same distortion that you find with a uh, wide angle lens. So I'm guessing that they took a photo of this and then just traced it. So there you go. That's how they created these uh, images back in the day. Took a picture and then traced it. So it didn't work out for me. So I had to go back out and take other photos to try to uh, eliminate as much as I could that distortion um, with my own uh, reference material. So when you take photos, obviously the larger the vehicle, the harder this is to do just because there's more information to capture. So even with a long uh, focal length, you may have to take numerous photos and then you can stitch them together. So once you have those photos and I captured a bunch, and uh, started putting those into Photoshop. You can kind of see what the, those that I took. And this was back before I had the buses inside of a building, so I had easier access to them when taking photos. So I tried to take a series of them. And then when I was done, I kind of stitched them all together, which I'm not gonna go into the Photoshop on how to do that, but basically you can lay them over and try to create one image that has, as much as you can, minimize the distortion um, now, unfortunately, I didn't take any of my photos with uh, a telephoto lens. I basically took the longest shot I could or the, the most telephoto lens with the lens that I had at the time on the camera, and it wasn't that wide. It was only a 35 millimeter. So there's actually still distortions in this as I'm learning. So I need to go back out and take more reference photos. Uh, but now, unfortunately, it's inside of a building, so the furthest I can get away from the side of the vehicle is three or four feet. So I did that uh, recently. I went out, I took some photos, or best I could, um, being that close to it. And uh, coming back inside and kind of looking at the photos and trying to stitch them together, uh, there's limited results. So, but, you know, as you do with any project, you make the best of what you have. And uh, so it's just going to take more photos and more trips uh, outside to take, uh, again, additional reference photos so that I can make this. So once you have all of that stuff and you've created your um, guide, if you will, whether through photos or through blueprints, then you can take that and go into Illustrator. And here is the final product for that uh, printout that I showed you of the GMC Old Look bus. So this is unit 2345 and in its original Kent State livery. So there you go. So if you haven't used Illustrator, basically 
it's like layering a cake and what you do is you stack objects on top of each other so obviously the lowest um, you know level of this image is the color and if I turn that off on the selection that you can see that's just gone away and then everything's stacked on top so as you kind of go up those stacks which is on the right side of the uh, screen here there's just different things that I've layered on top so like wheels uh, side rail um, accessories which looks like has just little things bumpers the water bumper on the front the lettering on the top uh, and then ultimately like some shading top details I don't know so I've kind of labeled these things as well so that's kind of the process is you kind of have to start with the basic the outline you can put color in initial if you want to but if not you can do that later and then start layering on top so windows have to sit on top of color and along the way so what I've gotten to so far and it doesn't look like much as much as I can show it here is this so I took my image I put it inside of Illustrator and then I just started tracing on top of that if I get rid of the photo you might be able to see it a little bit better so I've done windows the standy windows the side windows some vents done a little bit of coloring on some of the uh, reflectors that are on it and I've done the uh, uh, radiator the grill for the radiator in the back but that's it I only have the real basic outline the reason I kind of stopped is I still think there's enough error in the photos that I have that there's too much distortion to um, use those particularly on the front I think the front is still a little off um, you can see that this line in the middle here I kind of uh, let me turn off the, the dimming uh, but right through the middle is lined up perfectly but as you go down it's just more and more distorted you can see the top of the bumper obviously you shouldn't you see the top of the bumper when I'm doing an exact profile of that so um, I'm gonna go and have to take some more photos in addition to the ones that I took recently because again there's some things that are that are helping but it's still off uh, quite a bit so that's kind of what I'm doing into week 13 is starting the profiles I need to make two different liveries on this so this particular bus had two different colorings uh, I'm gonna obviously copy this one to start and then through other photos reference photos I'm gonna have to go in and um, piece together uh, how that one looked uh, originally it's gonna be similar to the coloring on the uh, old look GMC because they were painted roughly at the same time or within a couple of years of each other so be able to copy that over even if the lettering is the same for the Kent State we'll see I'll look at the uh, information and photos that I have so that's really it for week 13 as I'm doing illustration so this is about eight hours of work um, I'm pretty early on so I feel that these again I've never really counted before but it's felt like this has taken tens of hours so this might be a 30 hour project um, to get this one vehicle done I think I've already done those other ones um, so that's time sunk I'm not gonna worry about counting that from now on but uh, it's about eight hours in so I'll continue working on that that does give me something to do when we're in kind of this lockdown due to the coronavirus and uh, I have the reference material outside so that part helps as well so that's really it for week 13 is illustrations I'll probably pick up uh, week 14 to see how far along I get so thanks for watching and uh, see you next week bye now